أكبر لا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به عز وجل أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد That is with God's name, with Allah's name the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer the praises for Allah, the Lord, the cherisher, the sustainer of all the worlds. We seek his help, we seek his forgiveness, and we believe in him, the mighty, the majestic. I witness that there is no God, nothing that deserves to be worshipped, except for the one true God, Allah, who is one alone, and who was without partner in his run or his rule over the creation of the heavens and the earth. And we witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger to whom the Quran was revealed, the last of the prophets, the seal of the prophets. And we salute him with the salutation of prayers and peace, as well as we salute and we send the salutation upon his companions, his family, his companions, and all of the righteous. Amen. We thank Allah. We have a little, the sound is a little off to me, so I think they're working on it. Uh, but nevertheless, we thank Allah for our presence here on this blessed Yawmul Jumu'ah, the day of gathering. Really the day of, obli uh, of obligatory gathering. And I really want to go right into the topic that we have for today, which is the subject of Muslim life establishment, or the establishment of Muslim life. We're coming out of the month of Ramadan, Shahru Ramadan. And a lot of us, we are in a certain spirit. You know, when you come out of the month of Ramadan, the blessed month, the sacred month, you feel clean. It's kind of like after you take a shower, you just feel clean. You just took a shower. So after you come out of the month of Ramadan, spiritually, mentally, there's this cleanliness that you kind of feel. And it stays with you. It should. I, I, let me put it that way. <laughs> it should be. And by the time the next month of Ramadan comes, about a month, maybe a month and a half prior to it, we're ready for it. We say, yeah, it's about time for another Ramadan. Just like we can feel. We, we wash up, we go out into the world, we come home, our bodies know we need to cleanse, cleanse again. Now this sacred month, as we've mentioned before, it comes in the ninth month of the Muslim cal Islamic calendar. We have a lunar calendar, and the month of Ramadan every year, this doesn't change. It's the ninth month, and it symbolizes, it represents our renewal or our rebirth. Because the disciplines, the disciplines, the fasting, the withholding of anger, the managing of even our thoughts, let alone our standing in the night, etc., all of these disciplines are, are, are designed to put us in the right frame of mind, spirit, habit. Whereas our primary focus is not my respective appetite at the moment, not what, where, where my anger goes, not my emotional makeup, but the primary focus dominating my thinking, my behavior, my spirit is service to Allah. That's what the discipline is for. And the, 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 the time when we began, or when we were like that, is when we were first born. When we were first brought into this world, there was no other will dominant over us other than Allah's will. Right. It's only after, until, after we're influenced by circumstances that we have a change in our original human spirit. So our prophet, he said, for example, this hadith that we quote often, There is not a child born except that he is born upon the fitra. That's the nature of the child, the baby, when it comes out. Pure, innocent life. So at the end of the month of Ramadan, we celebrate it with the celebration called Eid al-Fitr. 
And Eid al-Fitr literally means the return or our returning to that original pure innocent life. Because the disciplines of the month were designed to orient us in the same innocence and purity of intent that that child comes into the world with. And we are told by our prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, if we stand, we fast during the day, we stand in the night hoping for a reward, all of the sins that we have amassed will be wiped away. And the only other time when we're existing in this world with no sin is when we're born. So if we perform the month correctly, we come out of the month clean slate. And our spirit and our thinking should also be clean. Should be. All right. In light of that, then, we really want to be aware of where our thinking should be. What is the pressing need for us as Muslims coming out of this month and going forward? You know, I was, I was going to say this later, but... You know, Islam is growing, and, I, and I, uh, it's interesting. After looking at everything, I have come to the conclusion that Atlanta, at least among African Americans, the Atlanta Muslim community is hands down the leading community. That wasn't always the case. That we had some competition, but I don't think there's any com <laughs> there's no competition anymore. And this is not, you know, uh, 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 Allah says, striving as in a race, compete for all that is good. And I think we came out of this month, really, I don't see another location. But we have to be careful. Because whenever Allah blesses you with something, you can lose it if you're not careful. I was the guest. I didn't, I didn't attend our Eid al-Fitr. Because I was the khatib of the Eid al-Fitr in Philadelphia. And that's you all who've been keeping up with the news. That's where the, the place I was at. It wasn't because of me, but that's where they had the... <laughs> they sent him back to Atlanta. No, no, it wasn't that. And they too, when after the, the prayer was... I mean, the crowd... I mean, it was just a sea of people. Beautiful. African-American, predominantly Muslim. Led the prayer, gave the khutbah, the imam took me around. I mean, I know the brother. I've been their guest before, so that's, they are, they're part of our association. So we're walking around. I mean, just a sea of Muslims, young Muslims predominantly, as, in so much as I can tell. There's a phenomena of a lot of Muslims, young people, converting to Islam. Islam is trending right now. But we don't want to be a Muslim community that is formed upon trends. We want to be a Muslim community that is formed upon Islam. That's important. And if we're not careful, if we're not standing our post properly, we will risk not losing the property or losing Islam. It will just be another picture of Islam. It will be a deformity of Islam. It will be because, remember, the devil is always at work. Always at work. So the devil will say, okay, they want to be Muslim. Let me take the most raggedy hood person and lift them up and present to them Islam. And it inspires, I'm not making fun of anybody. I want you here. If you're a Muslim, I don't care where you come from. You could have literally came out of the physical mud. Like they say, got it out the mud. You could have came from the physical mud. If you want to be here, you should be here. I'm talking about in this Muslim life. And I'm saying this for all of us because the, it's not, the, the problem with a lot of us who have been Muslim a long time, it's very easy for us to cast judgment on those who just became Muslim. That's what we don't want to do. Oh, why, why do they have uh, their pants hanging down? You used to eat pork. Why was you eating that pork? Because grandmama fed it to you. That's the culture and the environment to wear your pants a certain way. So the, the duty of the civilized is to teach the uncivilized. Never forget those lessons. But we have to be aware of just what's happening and understand that our life has to be strategized, it has to be planned. Because Allah can be doing a work, Allah is doing a work, and the devil knows that he is not in control of the work. So what, what is his next step? He wants to influence the direction of the work. So we want to know, back to, the, back to the, the, the main topic, the most important 
the most pressing concerns for Muslim life, and it begins with the foundation of Islam. When our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked what is Al-Islam, or when he just taught, there are two narrations. One he said, Buni Al-Islam al al khams Al-Islam is built upon five. Shahadati an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah wa iqami salah wa ita'i zakah wa al-hajj wa sawmu Ramadan. Al-Islam is built upon five testimony or the witnessing that there is no God except for Allah and that Muhammad is, his, is the messenger of Allah and the establishment of the prayer and the giving of the zakat and in this particular narration it says in the hajj and then it says the fast of Ramadan in another narration the hadith of Jibril when, he, when the man appears uh, in white hair deep black and he comes next to the prophet he sits next to him and he says inform me what is Islam and then the prophet gave the five pillars, and in that particular narration, he gives Hajj last. We've spoken on this before, but I want to bring this before us as a reminder of the value of these five. The first of the five is to witness that there is no God except for Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This is the basis of our life. This shahada, the first part of the shahada, la ilaha illallah, it takes us directly back to our second father, Adam, upon him be peace. I'm pardon me, Abraham, Ibrahim. Adam is our first father, Ibrahim is our second father. And Ibrahim is the one, he lived in a society of paganism. And the paganism that he was amongst was of such nature, really his father was a maker of idols. So some of the Commentators, they say, that the reason why Abraham went out to observe the star, the moon, the sun, is because in that society at that time, these things were deities amongst that people. Amongst those people, they worshiped the star, the moon, the sun. And believe me, that stays with us. Paganism is alive and well. The, 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 the world is structured its way, and then it gives us language to let us know. That's why these people that we look up to, they call them stars. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. And they put a signal through this particular, like there's an ancient science that we reject in Islam, that the movement of these heavenly bodies influence behavior. So we have a, a we have, I'll give you an example. And I'm not making fun. I'm not putting down anyone. I'm just, I have to just make, I'm trying to find uh, a ready, ready, available examples to make it plain. There's a woman who's a, who used to sing, African-American woman, or what they call R&B. The people, the people who follow her dance to R&B. She comes out with a country album. Now everyone goes by country hats and boots, cowboy hats and cowboy boots. So this is very clear now that people we look up to can shape behavior. Very clear. You wasn't wearing that a week ago. And the people who are the, the, the custodians of this society, they know that. They know that. So the way of modern American culture is the way of paganism. That's where they inherit it from. And the pagans, like the Pharaoh, the people of Pharaoh, ancient Egypt, and the nations before him and the nations after, they, speci they, they, they specialized, they gave, they gave attention to, focus on managing the behavior of their people. Because if they could manage the behavior, the spirituality, and the behavior of their people, then they could control the people, and those people will be out of their hair. Remember, in the beginning, Iblis doesn't want any competition for the world. He rejects the idea that man can be Khalifa on this earth, so what he's going to do, he's going to take Adam and the sons of Adam out of the competition. And how is he going to do it? This is why Ibrahim, he actually tells his father, Oh, my father, do not be a servant of Shaitan. How was, how was his father being a servant of shaitan? How was he working? That's what to serve me. How was he working for the Satan? He was working for the Satan by making the idols that influenced the public behavior. So in the judgment, the Satan is not charged with putting out idol worship. Men are. And when the men say, well, hey, he taught me this, he says, I only invited you. I had no authority over you. This is the world we're in. So Abraham, he observes these things. He observes the star. He observes the moon. He observes the sun rise and set. 
And he is brought to the conclusion that we express when we say la ilaha illallah. There is no God except for Allah. Meaning no thing that makes up this world, no thing, brothers please move up, no created entity, nothing that is created is worthy of worship. No thing created is God. The God is uncreated. He is the creator who has not been created. He is everlasting without end, eternal with no beginning. That's Allah. And because of that, no other thing, no man, no animal, no image, no power structure, nothing in this world deserves, is worthy of absolute authority over my life as a human being. My life, as, we, as it says in the Quran, my prayer, my, life, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah. That's the first. So we are following Abraham in that position. What follows from the Shahada is Salat. Salat as a sign, it is the most notable sign, it is the most really notable activity for Muslim life. We say prayer five times a day. And what it signifies is that after we recognize Allah, highly glorified is he, as our creator, as the supreme authority over our life, as our Lord, the Lord of all the worlds, what follows from that is that now we have to give our whole life in obedience to him. The whole of our life belongs to God. He created the life. He designed it. He knows what's best for it. So who is there to guide our life other than him? And how does he guide our life? He guides our life with the revealed book, Al-Quran, which is Huden. Huden Linnas, it's guidance for all mankind. And maybe you work throughout the day, brothers. Maybe you, sister, you're watching your children throughout the day. So maybe you don't have time to read the Quran, read a juz or half a juz. But if you're making your prayer at least five times a day, you are in touch with the Quran. In touch with the Quran. And it's so beautiful because all of the raka'at, whether it's dhuhr, whether it's asr, maghrib, isha, fajr, all, every raka'at has to have surah al-fatiha by the dominant opinion. And al-fatiha is ummul kitab. It's the mother of the whole book. And Allah is so merciful, the prophet, he said, prayers and peace be upon him, would one of you like to recite the whole Quran, the third of the Quran? And they said, how can we do that? And he said, if you recite Surah Al-Ikhlas, know that it is a third of the whole Quran. So if all you have is Al-Fatiha and Ikhlas, you're in good shape. Now you should learn Al-Fatiha, Ayatul Kursi, which is the mightiest ayah, and then Surah Al-Ikhlas, which is one third. Now you're in really, really good shape. Yes, all of our children should be learning that. Al-Fatiha, Ayatul Kursi, Surah Al-Ikhlas. Okay, so the prayer then puts our attention on the Quran and our attention given to the Quran. What, the Quran is guidance. So if we are putting attention on the Quran, we are now knowing what our life should be as Allah made that life. That's what the Quran is giving us. It is showing us what we were created to be. It is showing us what not to be. It is warning us. It is cautioning us. It is situating us to develop our life. So if you want to carry your life forward as a man, if you want to carry your life forward as a business owner, if you want to carry your life forward as a family man, if you want to carry your life forward in any way that is, in, that is excellent, be in touch with the Quran. Be in touch with the Quran. And when you read the Quran, look for yourself. How could it be guidance if it's not to be applied? And it's definitely not just history for the sake of history. It's lessons, wisdom. So the next, but it's not just the Quran, it's actually the discipline. When we hear the adhan, we're supposed to rush. As Allah says on this Friday, fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Rush to the remembrance of Allah. Rush to it. Meaning then, as was, as, as was mentioned in the, uh, uh, the adhan, Allahu Akbar. So even our attention for the prayer begins with the consciousness that nothing is more important than God himself. So whatever we're doing, Allahu Akbar, that's first. That's to respond to the prayer. Then we make the wudu, which is purification, preparing for the prayer. 
And if you, are, if you are going to make the prayer properly, the space can't be dirty. That's why we have prayer rugs. Now, you don't need a prayer rug. But it's a tradition because people are traveling. They may be outside. All of these feet walk across, you know, so people say, I want my prayer rug. The space has to be clean. You cannot have dirty clothes, filth on your clothes. You have to make wudu. So there's a process of or there's a principle of cleanliness and purification even connected with the prayer. Hence, our prophet said, prayers and peace be upon him. He asked his companions, he said, tell me if there was a river flowing outside of the door of your house that you went to and you would wash in it five times a day. Would there be any filth left on you? They said, no. He said, that is the likeness of the five prayers that we're given every day. So the prayer is the means by which we purify ourselves. Now, that's physically true. Or what I mean by that literally true is actually true. And then there's a higher reading, too. The five. Why five? We'll talk about that another time. But understand that we are creatures. Everything that reaches you from this world comes by way of either sight, smell, hearing, touch, taste. And the majority in this public, going back to the pagan world, they are managed by feeling, touch. They can't control their sexual appetite. That's feeling. They're addicted to a substance, feeling. You turn on, you go on your Instagram, sight. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean, sight. Well, some of you all, Pat. You listen to the radio, you listen to the news, hearing. These senses is how the devil reaches you. He has no other way to get you or I. But so Allah wants the, the intelligent man to subject his whole, his mind, his thinking, his whole self, his senses under the authority of his word. That's the only protection we have in this world. We say, going back to the adhan, hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. Come to prayer, come to success. The result of giving our whole selves to the word of Allah, giving our whole life in obedience of, uh, to, to Allah, the natural result is that we flourish. And I, you've heard me say this before. No person on earth, unless they're a liar, can say, I gave myself to God and failed. My whole life is a failure. You cannot, if you say that you're lying, you are lying. If you give yourself to, if we give ourselves to Allah, we are successful. It's guaranteed. And we can actually measure our life. We can say that the, the degree to which I'm going through hardship is the degree to which I've separated myself from my Lord. And as soon as I get back on track, trying to be in touch with my Lord, things seem to go right. And it, will, it may not happen immediately. Sometimes Allah will test you. Because sometimes we just want to pray and be close to Allah, make 10,000 rakah because we want something. And as soon as we get it, we forget all about Allah. He addresses this in the Quran. They're on a boat. And the waves begin to rock them. And they say, oh Allah, if you just deliver us. Then they get on land and go right back to what they were forbidden from before. This is teaching us the psychology of man. Yeah, long, sajda be 10 minutes in sajda. So the life flourishes, but the challenge of a flourishing life is to not forget the Lord who established us in that life. So we can give our life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if we give our life to Allah, he rewards us. But the reward is not just for us. The reward should be spent in the path of Allah to bring others to the light, to bring others to the life. So the third pillar is after salah is zakah. And zakah comes from a word that means purity, to purify, to augment, to increase. You know, some of the uh, 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 most troubled areas in this country and in other parts of the world are areas where there's not enough actual wealth given to help the condition of the people. We know that if, a, if, if, a, if an area is stricken with poverty, with, with, with having less, it increases the likelihood of people to behave in certain ways that they otherwise wouldn't. And one of the strongest ways to corrupt the soul, as given in the Quran, is to hoard wealth, to be a hoarder. So the spending of wealth not only purifies the giver, that's one form of purification, it also purifies or assists 
in purifying those who receive the wealth. So there's an exchange. You ever go to the, you ever go into, like we used to have an apple tree when I was young. And the apple, we wouldn't pick them, you know. It was so many bees around it. But after you don't pick them for so, for so long, they begin to mold. And they actually attract more animals, uh, uh, it bees, insects. So in other words, the fruits of the tree that were not in use became moldy or, 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 or of no use. It would have been better to give the apples out so people could eat them. So there's a principle in the natural world that the more you give, the more you are of benefit. And the more you hoard, the more you decay and bring about corruption, just like that tree. I know it's hot. Bear with me, though. So, Zakat, the next, I don't have to go too much into this, Ramadan. Ramadan is the discipline of bringing our whole life in connection with Allah. So what we do is we deny ourselves. We deny ourselves. We don't just deny ourselves what, what is forbidden. We are, we're always supposed to stay away from what's forbidden. We deny ourselves of what is lawful. And this discipline is so thoroughly uh, uh, tied into the religion, even when we travel, it's recommended strongly to break your fast because Allah says break your, unless you're traveling. Meaning what? You can be in travel and it not bother you, especially with modern day travel. It's so convenient. But the issue is sometimes we will say, I can do it, so I'm going to fast. But the discipline of Ramadan in its essence is not even about you or what you can do. It's not about me or what I can do. It's about a life in complete conformity to what Allah says. So even me breaking my fast is respecting the mercy that Allah extends to me. If a man of great stature gives you a gift in this world, if your loved one gives you a gift in this world, it's disrespectful to turn the gift down. At least in their face. Yeah, my children, you know, I love them. They're not of great, sta of great stature from the heart for me, but they give me stuff. They make these cards, and I find them so precious. But imagine if they saw me and I said, oh, the, you know, it's not the best drawing, and I just stuff it in the drawer. That's disrespectful. So apply your best. We have to apply our best sensitivities to these things. And lastly, Hajj. Hajj. It's unfortunate the situation for Hajj right now but if you can make Umrah, if we don't know when the Hajj is going to be, make something. Try to make it if you can. Because Hajj, traveling to that house, it represents the direction that Allah wants for all human beings. And he wants all human beings to come together as one family. We are in a time where this notion of the human family is being worked against. The Satan, just like, again, Allah says the Pharaoh, what he did was he separated people into groups. This is what Allah says in the Quran. So don't fall so much into this male against female, Democrat versus Republican, conservative versus rich versus poor. That's the Satan's way to break people up into sects. And now you have nation against nation. So we're looking in the Middle East right now, and we're seeing that the, that the, the, the Israelis bomb the, the Iranians. Then the Iranians fire. Now they say the Israelis just fired back. And it looks like a regional war forming. But it's really a world war. Because if we are supplying them, assisting them, it's, it's brought us in. Whether we are have boots on the ground or not. And if we are supplying the people in uh, Ukraine, how is, how is war not going on all around the world? Because these men, have lost the way. They have lost, these men who are supposed to be leaders of our world, they have lost the way. Even the Hamas leaders, the Hamas leaders don't live in Gaza or Palestine. I don't know if we know that. They live in palaces. This is a fact. The Saudi leaders, palaces, leaders of America, mansions, leaders of uh, 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 Israel, mansions. And we're down here killing each other. This is serious. So they jeopardize all of those women and children who have lost their life. And they're sitting up somewhere in a palace, eating good, living good, Swedish women. I'm serious. Go 
devil. They're not the devil. They worship, they worship the devil. They are his servants. And it is time for us to stop being sheepish as Muslims. We should have the authority, or not the authority, the faith. If the devil physically was right here, tell him to his faith, you're nothing but a low-down, dirty devil. And take his head off. Yeah, yeah, don't just tell him that and let him go. Say, I sound like him. No, 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 no. Take it off. That's the time we're in. That's the time we're in. Who should we fear? If Allah has chosen us, you all heard me, that's, that's my mantra. If Allah has chosen us, who should we fear? Nothing can happen to us other than that which Allah wants to happen to us. That's the life we've chosen. So don't be weak. Especially for the brothers. We don't want, we see, I see a lot of sisters out there posting and on front line. We don't, we want our sisters protected. Brothers should be the ones to die first. Yeah. <laughs> then say that the sisters don't respect us. Because you ain't going to die first. You're going to have her die first. <laughs> the world is one. P please come up if you have any space. The world is humanity. Human beings are one family. Right. We're one family. One. There's no superiority, as our prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of an Arab over a non-Arab. There's no superiority of a non-Arab over an Arab. There's no superiority of a white over a black or a black over a white. We all are sons of Adam. And Adam was from the dust of the ground. So this last pillar takes us to that. So all of the other pillars are leading us to that profound insight. And there has to be some of us on this earth standing upon in the spirit of and living by that profound insight. That human life is sacred, human life is one, human life is valuable, and we are the guardians of the sacredness of human life. That's our position. And we have been chosen because the whole world put down our value. So Allah in his beautiful mercy and in his wisdom, look at the one you put down. Look at the one that the whole world rejects as something subhuman. God takes that same one and makes that one in the forefront of representing the true purpose, interest of what humanity should be all about. Allahu Akbar. This is our religion. These five are the foundation. Like these pillars in here, they support something. But our life, there are other obligations. Once we get married, there are obligations in the marriage. There's actual Islamic rules coming from the Quran, coming from our prophet that determine how the marriage is conducted. If we do business, there are rules for business in Islam. There's inheritance law. There's actually a law of how law explains how the wealth is to be passed down. There's obligatory areas of knowledge that we have to know. So dear believers, dear brothers and sisters, understand that upon these five, we go out into other areas of Muslim life, and these areas have to be known. They have to be known by us and transmitted to our children. And we have to accept the full responsibility of Muslim life to carry it properly. And there's no other way to do that than to be connected to the beautiful model of our Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him. Inshallah, we'll talk about that. We'll mention that in the second part of the khutbah. Let us make dua. الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد This religion al-Islam Allah says of it this day have I perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and I رضيت I am pleased with al-Islam as religion. So when we accept Al-Islam, we have that which Allah himself is pleased with. This religion answers all of our needs. All of our needs. As individuals, as groups, all of our needs. Don't doubt the value of the Quran and do not doubt the value of the prophetic sunnah. 
we are missing who Muhammad really is. Prayers and peace be upon him. We are missing who he really is all too often. This is why we will have people who come into, who, 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 who come to Islam. They'll dress a certain way. They'll say, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, InshaAllah. They'll say the stuff, the words. But they just got high. Or they have children. They're making children out of wedlock. Or they're Muslim and Muslim and they're shooting at each other. You don't have the real thing. I repeat, if you want to be Muslim, we want you. But if you don't want to be Muslim, and if you, if you are holding on to Islam, I'm not speaking, you all know we broadcast everywhere. I'm speaking to everybody. If you don't want Islam, and you're a faker, you want the street, you want something else, you want the cultural thing, Allah will destroy you. We don't have to do anything. But sometimes Allah will use the hands of the believers to destroy the hypocrites and to destroy the disbelievers. So Allah says to our prophet, for example, it was not you who threw, but it was Allah who threw when you cast the, the dust. So Allah sometimes will use the righteous to defeat the unrighteous. If you're going to be a Muslim, if you're going to submit yourself to the will of Allah, you have to be just like Moses in the sacred valley. Leave your, take your shoes off. And it's merciful. This religion is merciful. Allah didn't just outright, right away forbid alcohol, for example, or any intoxicant. First he told him, before speaking about it, after he spoke about it, then he told him, well, at least don't come to prayer that way. So if you're going to come to Juma Salat, don't come high. If you're going to make dhuhr, asr, maghrib, etc., don't, come, don't, don't be high. Your prayer is not accepted. In time, you will find, the more you stay, you say, well, I can only get high at night. <laughs> Fine. That's the way it was established. I'm not. But you'll find that Allah will bless you. And in time, you say, man, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him. We don't want to just know how he dressed, how he ate. Oh, he ate with his right hand. I'm not knocking that at all. I eat with my right hand. I cover my hair. I try to. This is like a, this is a Turkish kufi. It's like a skull cap, really. But I wear it because nothing else hugs my head. Everything else falls out, falls off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have my own maid. Yeah, black man Kufi. <laughs> so, in his life, listen to this is important. His life is what was more than his rituals. And I'm going to explain what I mean. Some of us, oh, we make all the dhikr. We make all the prayer. But we curse our wives. We can't control our anger. You have an opportunity to make more money to improve the condition of your wife and children and you fail all the time. What are you praying for? You should be praying for the mind and the spirit to carry your responsibility as a real man. I, I'm, not, I'm not beating up on you all. Sometimes I'm just... This is, this is, it's, time is out for all of this stuff. Be real. Same thing, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to go to the sisters, same thing, just flip it. They do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, they be liking when I talk about y'all. <laughs> same thing. You're not patient with your wife. Your wife does something, oh, I divorce you. You're ignorant. You, you, you don't have Muhammad. Listen to what his wife, Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her. What did she say? 
when the revelation came and he, he thought something was happening to him, he was afraid. He didn't know. And he was looking for comfort. And he asked, it, is this a demon? Am I being cursed? She said, by Allah, no. Allah will never disgrace you. This is before the, the book just came down. So there was no sunnah. There was no nothing. This was the man who the Quran was revealed to. This was the vessel that received the Quran. That's why I'm reading this. Allah will never disgrace you. You keep good family relations. You bear the burden of the weak. You help the poor and the needy. You are generous towards your guests and you endure hardship in the path of truthfulness. This is the man Muhammad ibn Abdullah before he even became Rasulullah or after the moment of. This is how she's describing him. So this is the man we follow. If we're not, if we're not, Allahu Akbar, if we're not seeing that part of him, but we're seeing dress, kufi, we're missing something. Let Muhammad give us our behavior. Let him give us our spirit. Let him determine or show us how we should be treating our wives, our children, our husbands, our neighbors, strangers. Let him be the model. That man, with the guidance of this book, everything that we enjoy for this modern world comes from them. This world was savage. The people were heathens. In Africa, don't let them lie. Oh, in Africa, we were doing, you were a heathen. <coughs> European, heathen. Arabs, heathen. Persians, he, they were heathens. They had civilization. It was heathen. We got civilization in America. It's heathen civilization. You don't think Las Vegas has billions of dollars coming in and out? But look at what's supporting that. You don't think those people live good who, who, who run Las Vegas? But it's all based upon savage, heathen behavior. Civilized heathens. The jinn. The Gentile. He is the real Khalifa, the prophet. He's the real Khalifa. When Allah says, surely I am making in the earth a Khalifa, it wasn't realized until Muhammad came. And no one after him until this day can claim that office in the correct measure or the exact measure or according to the reality of what it really means except for him. And we as an ummah, today, yesterday, and always, our excellence and our ability to perform as Khalifa, meaning managing every responsibility that comes along with life in society, it can only be achieved to the degree that we follow that man. If we follow his model, we rise in the role of Khalifa because he's the true one. If we, if we, if we deviate from that model, we lose the position of Khalifa. And that has happened in the Muslim world. Just as it has happened time and time again down through history. Dear brothers and sisters, let us take up the charge to accept the full role of the responsible man, the responsible woman given authority in this earth. Let's take more responsibility over our own individual selves, our appetites, our anger, how we even spend our time, what we give our attention to. They say you can calculate the time people are on the, the, the phone used to be on television. It amounts, it amounts to like hours a day. Let us give, let us take responsibility for our homes. Let us take more responsibility for those things that we say are ours, our community, etc. Allah is with us. Allah is with us. So I don't mean uh, sometimes I, 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 I do, I don't, but I do. Speak hard. Because the devil wants to defeat you and I. That's what he wants. And we want, the, we, want, we want to let that presence among us know you're not welcome here and we will kill you That's right. righteously. That's right. We are here, God has chosen us, and we are never going to leave this path. We're never going to leave. So you all might as well, myself included, we might as well strap in. You ain't going nowhere. No, if you left Islam today, it'll haunt you forever. And we get them. We get people that say, man, I, was, I took Shahada 10 years ago. I'm back. Yeah, I know. Welcome back. We don't hold that against you. Welcome back, brother. 
Come on in. A lie ain't going to let you go. You ain't going nowhere. So you're here. Let's build upon this life. Let, accept, let us accept this life. Let us take this life seriously. The more we do that, the more Allah will lift us up. And the more we are lifted up, the better we can serve the interests of all human beings on this planet Earth. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barak Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fi al-alamin innaka hamidun majid. Ameen. We come to salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَى وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ فتكونا من الظالمين فأزلهما الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما مما كان فيه وقلنا اهبطوا بعضكم لبعض عدو ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلى حين فتلقى آدم من ربه كلمات فتاب عليه إنه هو التواب الرحيم الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Arrahmanir Rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا بني 
إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأوفوا بعهدي وأوفوا بعهدي أوف بعهدكم وإياي فارهبون وآمنوا بما أنزلت مصدقا لما معكم ولا تكونوا أول كافر به ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا وإياي فاتكون ولا تلبسوا الحق بالباطل وتكتموا الحق وأنتم تعلمون وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة واركعوا مع الراكعين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين May Allah accept it. Allah Akbar uh, I'm waiting on the uh, I, don't, I need the announcements Announcements <laughs> yeah, They're going to be gone <laughs> Yeah please yeah Because I don't, I don't bring my phone in here when I pray So we do have a quarterly community meeting next Sunday, April 28th, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, Sunday, 2 o'clock, Sunday, thank you. Next Sunday, not this Sunday, next Sunday. Sunday. Okay, announcements on the way, so if you all can hang tight, uh, you know, we have a lot of people on vacation, so it's good, it's excellent. I saw it. Okay, here we go. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, there we go, my man. Thank you, sir. Okay, alhamdulillah. Welcome to guests and visitors. Inna, illa, inna lillahi wa inna lehi raji'un. Prayers for Imam Abu Qadir of San Francisco Masjid. May Allah have mercy upon him and grant him paradise. Amin. Uh, we've been hard at work conducting a thorough assessment of our current state. As part of our strategic planning efforts for Muhammad Schools, we are thrilled to announce that we're ready to share the results with our community. We invite you to join us at the upcoming town hall meeting on April 25th at 6 p.m. in the gym, where we'll unveil the findings and discuss the next steps. Your ongoing input and commitment to this process are needed, so please mark your calendars and be prepared to sign up for a working group as we chart our path forward together. That's April 25th at 6 p.m. in the gym. Faith Institute class Classes were on break. We will resume this Sunday, April 21st. That's for the classes. Um, Atlanta Society of Muslim Men Scholarships for 2024 high school graduates. ASMM invites graduating high school seniors who plan to attend college to apply for the ASMM scholarship. The scholarship amount can be up to $1,000, and applications must be received by April 30th, 2024. For more information about the scholarship and the application, go to ASO. M -M 
www.healthscreening.org. O-R-G. Quarterly health screening, Saturday, April 20th at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Atlanta Masjid. That's tomorrow, right? April 20th? Okay, be there for that quarterly health screening. On behalf of the Muslim pioneers, Brother Atif and Sister Najia Wajid, Talia Wajid is offering free admission to all seniors and matured youth to the World Natural Hair, Health, and Beauty Show, which is April 27th to 28th at the Georgia International Convention Center. For free admission, simply show your ID at quote, we'll call and give the greetings. All non-seniors can purchase tickets at naturalhair.org. That's naturalhairshow.org. Children under 12 get in free. Sunday, April 28th, 2024, we will initiate the first of three sessions on healing from trauma. The sessions will be the last Sunday of each month for April, May, and June from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern. Sessions are available on the Atlanta Masjid Facebook page and will be streamed live. Please prepare for the entire family and tribe to join. Check out Facebook, Instagram, or newsletter for sign up for support. Or sign up for support. The Big Green event is coming to Firdaus Garden at Muhammad Schools. That's April 30th, 12 to 4 p.m. for interactive learning. So please go to uh, the Firdaus Community Garden April 30th from 12 to 4 p.m. for the Big Green event. Please keep those in our community who are sick and healing in your prayers. Imam Khalil Sultan, Brother Ian Humphrey, Imam Dawood Abdul Salam, Brother Akram Sadiq, Brother Omar Wajid, Brother Hakeem Yamini, Brother Yusuf Roberts, Sister Latina. Tifa Sabir, Sister Bayan Ashaid, Sister Rashida L, uh, Sister Shafika Abdullah. Is there anything I missed? I said a lot. I got it. May Allah accept our salat. Assalamu alaikum. No, right? <laughs>